Hi guys, it's Jessica here with a Dolly Updates video for you. Uh, I, I put at the beginning of the video, I put um, box opening photos and videos that I took um, when this guy came in. Uh, today's Monday and he came in the day before yesterday, which was Saturday. And um, he was, I ordered him through Menton card and did a six month layaway <clears throat> and he uh from the time that i ordered him to the time i had him it's it was about seven months um so i am sad that Menton card is going away because it was nice to be able to do those six month layaways um for doll chateau and doll zone um in my book it's better to just be paying a little bit at a time is if you have to wait that long anyways but anyways you can see uh he is a really beautiful tan <laughs> and <clears throat> I don't, i'm sure many of you are aware of the recent problems recent um, problems with doll zone and doll chateau tan um there were some pretty orange dolls um that went out um and my Doll Chateau uh, K11 body, I think is what it's called. Um, it's the really tall, tall MSD body. Um, came in last month and uh, she wasn't as orange as Ann Picaro's order, um, but she definitely had an, a more orangish tint and did not look like Doll Zone Tan from last spring. <clears throat> But this guy, uh, I was so relieved when I opened him up and his color was very nice. Um, it's still not the same shade as uh, what I got last spring. Let me grab something to show you. Um, okay, so here we go. This is... Um, it's not too bad. This was my Doll Zone Cindy uh, head in the tan that I received last spring um, when my Doll Zone order came in. So, very nice. I would say maybe it's a little more translucent, maybe. Um, my Doll Chateau doll that I got last month was definitely a lot more translucent. Uh, but he's really beautiful. Um, I <clears throat> I don't know. I, I'm still, I'm very scared to order <laughs> Doll Zone Tan again, which is too bad. I, I really wanted, um, I really wanted Snowborn, or at least his body. Um, I really wanted to get a uh, Doll Zone boy on the new Doll Zone body in tan. So, I don't know. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how things go this year um, and how and how Doll Zone and Doll Chateau <clears throat> do. But anyways, this is this is Doll Zone Robin. He's gorgeous. <laughs> I, I love him. Um, he has just been sitting here on the desk next to me while um, while I sew and work on dolly crafts and I just I love him I love him love him uh, he came with a face up and I actually couldn't remember because it's you know it's been seven months uh, when I was opening him I'm like did I order him with a face up I can't even remember I think it said on the box though when I got to the box I think it said that he has a face up so this is the company default face up and I re I do really like it um, and it's unlikely that I am going to alter it or change it, though eventually I would like to get him something different. I have dolls that are blank right now, um, and they take priority, uh, but there's some things. Uh, my What I would like is <clears throat> I would like a little more definition in his mouth as far as dark darker for the corners, and he's got kind of a slightly open mouth, and I think like if that was painted maybe almost black um, it would show that a little better um, and I would probably just because of how beautiful this tan resin is 
I would like him to have smokier eyes and probably more defined eyebrows. So things, so this face up is good enough for now. Um, I'm not going to make any changes. It did come with eyelashes and which you, I don't think you can even see at all. Um, but when I went to go to put his eyes in, I immediately screwed it up. I immediately, I just, I love eyelashes and dolls, but pretty much every single doll <laughs> that I've got this last year that came with eyelashes, I've immediately screwed them up and I'm just putting the eyes in. So I, I don't know, like I'm just trying to put the eyes in and the eyelashes pop out. Um, so, uh, yeah. But oh well, um, they were nice. They were very fine, really nice boy eyelashes. And I forget what eyes I have in him right now. Um, these are, oh yeah, these are a pair of brown eyes that I ordered from oh, somebody on Etsy. Um, I hate that, I hate when I can't remember their name. Um, but uh, I've, I've gotten, a pair a few pair of eyes for her from her uh, and they were always all really nice um, I'll look real quick um, she she I, I got a pair of 16 or 18 millimeter brown eyes from her which are gorgeous, but just nobody can wear them because they're so big, unfortunately. Um, but, uh, oh yeah, here we go. Uh, Petite Papillon Shop uh, is her is her Etsy. Um, and I'm not sure if she's still doing orders and customs, but these were a pair of eyes that I got from her and they're really pretty. Um, he is wearing a t-shirt that I hastily made for him the day of his arrival, um, and it's okay, uh, I just have problems with knits, and I think I need to get some sort of stabilizer because I have such problems with the fabric stretching, and it's not all knits, um, it's just certain kinds <clears throat> that it will just stretch the fabric terribly, so I need to get some sort of stabilizer to stick on there something tissue paper I, i've got to change my technique because it's it's just not working for me but anyways he got he did get something um victor gave was very kind and gave him his jacket <laughs> um and i really do like it on him this was a pair of jeans that i got um i got them with my vinitu actually the seller um, included them um, and a t-shirt and and so these are they're not one of those really expensive pair of jeans you know those forty dollar fifty dollar nine nine style or code noir but they're they fit 70 centimeter dolls whoops he's very loose um, he is so so loose that his knee will just like disc um, disjoint <laughs> so he could really really use a tightening and a suading I just haven't gotten to it um, but yeah these jeans fit 70 centimeter dolls uh, slimmer ones pretty good um, style wise the thing uh, I'm really really inspired uh, to be kind of kind of vintage uh, 70s uh, early 80 type styles um the the jackets and the colors um some of the things that i've been working on um i'm just really really inspired so that's my version of modern <laughs> because i don't none of my characters i guess are truly truly modern they're a, a hodgepodge um and my most modern group uh which is um caribou woman's kind of subset story uh it's 70s early 80s type time frame um and it's partly because that's a, a it's nostalgic for me and my early childhood and um so i'm just really enjoying exploring that through my dolls um but yeah loving loving dolls own robin 
um, I kind of put this wig on him just because it was a boy size wig that I had <laughs> and with the intention that I would probably get him something different, something darker, um, but uh, with his face up, especially with the lighter eyebrows that he has, I think that this wig suits him pretty good. Uh, it does. Um, <clears throat> Why don't we, let's see, I'd kind of, I kind of do want to show you, I don't know, I was going to take off his clothes. He doesn't have, he doesn't have seam lines or sanding marks that I can see. The resin is very nice. Um, I'm just, I'm super, super happy with this doll. I'm just super happy with him. Um, and yeah, just really, really been enjoying him. Um, and I don't know if I will... Um, if I will be getting any more Dolls Own or Doll Chateau for the time being, in tan resin anyways, uh, but I sure am tempted because I just really do love their dolls. This, this resin color is so nice and beautiful, um, I really like him. <laughs> uh, he has, he's just kind of sweet too. I, I've been wanting a Dolls Own Robin for a long time. When I first started seeing his pictures, I wanted him. Um, he came, uh, I, I kind of totally forgot that he was going to be coming with an event doll, uh, and I didn't really see, I haven't seen a lot of these, um, it was a very short period it seemed like, uh, it wasn't really on my radar as a doll that I was interested in or wanted, um, but I think, I think I had to pay a little bit for the upgrade to Lavender Resin, and I was just really curious to see what that would look like. And it's gorgeous. <laughs> uh, I've got these little boots on here so that she can stand because otherwise she can't. She's got these funny little legs. Um, they're little, they're little two, three-toed, I don't know, cat paws or something. And then she's got these bigger ones for her hands. I don't know what she's supposed to be. <laughs> Some sort of cat demon thing. Um, but this was a wig that I got in um, those high chi um, lucky bags like two years back and it's this wig that never has fit anybody ever. It's this super tiny weird little wig and it's almost exactly like the wig that they have on her promo photos and I had to I had to dig all around to find it um, but I was determined to find it and try it on her and it just fits great. <laughs> uh, it just fits her perfect. She's wearing a pair of, um, she came with a pair of red glass eyes that are pretty nice. Um, doll Zone always sends such beautiful glass eyes with their dolls. Um, usually, I usually switch them out because they're usually, they're regular iris, they're not small iris eyes and depending on the doll, usually I'm I want a small iris eye, um, but she's just freaking adorable. She's got these magnetic horns and they might end up getting stolen by somebody, but so far <laughs> she's managed to hang on to them. Um, she's wearing some Ursaflo, no, what am I saying? Um, Enzo eyes. These are some little tiny Enzo eyes uh, that, that suited her pretty good. She's got a little, her little butt is so cute, a little magnetic tail. She's got these funky wings <laughs> um, and they, they make it really hard to pose or stand her, but they are freaking cute. She is just this adorable um, little thing. The resin color, this resin is gorgeous. If they, oh my gosh, I would love to have one of their dolls um, in this resin color. It's so gorgeous. The only, the only company that I know, that I know of that you can get this as a regular color is, uh, Resin Soul. Um, they're lavender or something, but, oh, it's so pretty. Isn't she cute? I think she's called Lulu. Um, this goes her boot again. <laughs> I better get it before the dogs do. Um, and I don't know what, it, I saw some things online about people selling this doll even blank for like $500. So, wow, if somebody wants to buy her for, let's say $400, hit me up. <laughs> I can't imagine anybody would buy her for that much, but 
I mean, I kind of like her, but if somebody was going to give me $400 for her, heck yeah. I'd, I'd throw in the wig and the shoes and the eyes. $400. <laughs> so hit me up if you want this girl. Um, she's pretty cute. She's pretty adorable. Um, but it's, you said, I'm trying to, to sit her or to stand her or to do anything. I thought about taking off her wings, but, oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, crazy, crazy dolly year so far. Um, it's, we're not even through February yet. And I just, there's so many dolls that have been coming in. Um, you know, to be fair, a lot of these have been, uh, I've been waiting for them for, you know, over a year. I mean, over, over half a year. So six months, seven months I've been waiting on these dolls. So, <clears throat> um, I wanted to show you some things that I was working on. Um, I made her a cute little top, <laughs> just this little, um, having fun with my little dango. She's just really fun to pose and make little things for and I'm really enjoying her. Um, so I, I've, I wouldn't say that this is done. There's other things that I want to do, but I'm really liking how my, um, Thunderbull, Long Soul Thunderbull, outfits is coming along. Um, this is uh, what I've been working on. Um, isn't he gorgeous? Oh my gosh, this doll is just, he is just so handsome. Um, so part of what he's wearing, um, the undershirt that he's wearing is what came with his full set. And his full set outfit is gorgeous. It's super gorgeous and has all this amazing embellishment. Um, but it's really long. Um, it's, you know, that's the long sole kind of styles, these long flowing robes. Um, and, uh, it just, it's beautiful. Like if you want to just display them, it's just super gorgeous, but trying to like handle and pose and do things with the doll. Um, but more than that, it was, I wanted to be sure, uh, that his, I was going to try to, I might move this back. Um, I didn't want his beautiful hooves to be um, covered up. I wanted them to stick out. Uh, so um, he came with a really uh, multiple panel flowing skirt. And I basically made it almost exactly like that, except I made it shorter. Um, and... Uh, I just made a really, really simplified jacket. Um, it doesn't have all the elaborate panels that the other one has, and it's uh, a lot more short, and like he can actually move around in it. Um, it is it it is um, double lined. Um, I'm gonna take it off to show you because I'm kind of proud of kind of proud of how it turned out. Um, He's actually borrowing the belt from the, the yukata that I made for Monster Danu. Um, and what I, what I would really like to do, and maybe eventually I'll build up the courage to do it, is I would like to modify the full set that he came with uh, and basically shorten it and make it more of a short jacket type situation. I don't know. Like, it's it, this beautiful full set, and, like, that would be, I don't know, I just can't bring myself to do that. <laughs> um, so, for now, I'm kind of remaking it myself, um, the way that I would like it. Um, so, uh, this is the, this is the jacket that I made him, um, and it's, it's basically the same sort of pattern um, as the long sole outfits, except it's sleeveless because I wanted these beautiful sleeves that came with his full set undershirt to show. Um, and, uh, this is fully lined, uh, fully lined. So there's no raw ed edges. If I had it to do over again, I would have made the inside lining gold, like the collar, um, because that would make more sense, um, that it it's supposed to mimic this look of 
that he's got multiple layers you know like there's a red jacket over maybe a, a yellow jacket um and that would have maybe looked a little that illusion would it would have brought that illusion a little more um i stayed up too late sewing this and kind of didn't think about that <laughs> um but i'm just i am really proud with this fabric was really difficult to work with and trying to line it and get edges to line up and not slip all over. Um, yeah, there was lots of pulling out stitches and re-sewing just because things would slip. Um, yeah, so here I'll show you the under part here. Um, this is his the undershirt that came with his full set outfit and it's just really gorgeous it's got this beautiful um, and the jacket that he came with that goes over this or the robes it's it's got this uh, beautiful embroidered ribbon um, but this is just gorgeous and this is all this is all fully lined even the sleeves it's just so gorgeous I love long sole clothes so much um, and so this is the skirt that I made him. It's got multiple layers. It's out of the sheer fabric, uh, because I kind of like being able to see through it a little bit. It's kind of risque. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I wanted his hooves to still be seen. Um, and, uh, right now I have a safety pin. <laughs> closing this because I, I am going to make a, um, a band that goes under this that's, that fits him, um, and that will not bulk, be too bulky. So I think I'm just going to do a ribbon basically. Um, and I just, I basically just went off of how they had designed his underskirt that just goes out everywhere. It's gorgeous. <laughs> it's super gorgeous. Like if you have the doll up for display, it's so pretty. Um, but I wanted to be able to see his beautiful, beautiful hooves. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of proud of that. Uh, I, I based it off of, um, some of the other patterns that I've made for the kimonos and yukatas that I've made and and again um i've had i've had some comments about well that's not the right length for a yukata or, or something along those lines and um i need to i need to add that this is inspired <laughs> these are inspired by traditional um japanese korean and chinese type dress um and these robes it, it I'm pretty sure it's the Japanese ones that are called kimonos and yukatas. I think there's a different name for those types of uh, clothing in, in Korean and Chinese language. Um, but that's, it's, it's inspired and uh, I'm the designer <laughs> and I make the calls for what I want for my individual doll. So, um, I take my cues from what's traditional and I like to look and see how it's traditionally made, but in, in the end I am going to make design decisions based on what I think is going to complement what I'm trying to make. Um, and this is really hard to put on because everything is so slippery. <laughs> uh, and I need to put a pin in there actually just to keep it from slipping while I put on this slippery belt. Um, yeah, so, yeah, you know, I don't want to make anybody feel bad or anything, but, um, anything that I design, uh, I like, I like to research, I love to research, I love to learn, um, about the traditional uses, I love, I love historical clothes, um, I love researching historical clothes, and then I... Um, change them and alter them uh, for my purposes. <laughs> um, so it's a, this is supposed to be a little higher up, but it's so slippery. <laughs> it keeps falling. Isn't he a handsome boy? I, I am this doll, this doll, he's big. Um, and, but 
for as big a doll as this guy is, he's 75 centimeters tall, um, he can, it's deceiving uh, that he's as big a doll as that. Just all the all my long soul bodies, um, they're all they're all this 75 centimeter. They're all the same except for this one has the hooves. Um, otherwise, every, every other part of it is the same. Um, they just really deceive you uh, that they don't seem like they are that huge a body. Um, I'm, I'm definitely a fan and there will be more long soul, long soul bodies and dolls in my future. Um, quality wise, I mean, I love my doll zone boy. I love the aesthetic of his body. Um, the joints are really nice and I think suading and tightening more than anything is going to help him out a ton. Um, this guy needs tightening and suading. Um, he's probably almost equally as too loose, um, but he, I, I just, I can't recommend, I can't gush enough about Long Soul. Uh, I, I'm just so, so happy with their quality. Um, you know, wait time is four to six months. Um, both of my guys are second hand the one that i ordered through alice's collections that you know i think it was four to five months something like that i can't remember now um but yeah i think uh alice's collection does a four or five month layaway um and so by the time i was making my last payment i was getting the notification that he was ready to ship so it wasn't a long you know after the layaway was finished Again, I just can't recommend enough. These guys are freaking awesome. <laughs> um, other sewing. Let's see. Gosh, we're 25 minutes. Um, and I, here I, again, was afraid that I wasn't going to have enough things to talk about. <laughs> other sewing things. So this was, um, I think it was in the last video that I was talking about that I wanted to make. Uh, I wanted to attempt an MSD sized... Um, bomber jacket type of, it's a raglan sleeve bomber jacket, I guess is what I would call these. Um, so this is, uh, this is a mini fee muscular boy body and he's got, I always forget that this isn't a, <laughs> this isn't a mini fee head. Um, this is a with doll, with doll taran head, which I just love. I love this guy. Love, love, love this guy. Um, and, I, and it fits pretty good. Uh, it definitely, um, if I make any more of these mini feed jackets, I am go not going to use these materials. Um, well, at least the pockets. I'll, I'll definitely need to use something a lot less thick um, because it was just too bulky. And they did turn out okay, um, but they're just, they're bulkier than I would like. Like they're actual functional welt pockets. Um, I, I really like how the neck turned out, the neck band, um, the sleeve, the sleeves, like, uh, putting in a zipper in this size, that was definitely challenging. And these were the zippers that I got in from that order too. Um, and, uh, yeah, um. So definitely that was a lot more challenging and there's some things that I think I'm going to need to change to get it to work at this size. Um, next step is something like dango size, <laughs> you know, that's going to fit um, Blythe dolls essentially. They're that one twelfth scale doll. Um, definitely going to need a lot lighter fabrics to do that. Um, it just gets bulkier and bulkier and more difficult the smaller that you go. <clears throat> um, one more sewing thing that I wanted to show you. I have almost finished Pieta's um, corset. Uh, I need she still needs the, the beading work, and I'd like to do some bows. Um, 
it's a piece of sticky tack it's showing this is a a wig that she's been wearing I really do like it on her she still needs a face up when Fitzwig opens up again I'll send them to her <laughs> um, but this uh, this ribbon if you can see that it's actually lined in gold and I really like it it was it, it's really pretty um, I do want to uh, I still want to I need to do some reading and some research about dyeing lace um, I do have quite a bit of cotton this really nice cotton French lace um, and I don't want to run it uh, so I'll do some little batches I, but I want to I want to learn about dyeing it um, because uh, I love that I love the look of different color laces with the corsets um, I think it just really really makes them shine um, so this is just kind of a cream color of the lace I did it's not altered it in any way she definitely needs some bows and some beading. <laughs> it's not opulent enough. <laughs> um, Character-wise, uh, Thunderbull, uh, he doesn't have a specific character in mind. Um, but I am thinking, and that was kind of my thought when I ordered him, um, is that he is Lark. Um, and... Lark was initially my mini fee. Um, mer? Is he a mer? I, I, it just went out of my brain. I think he's a mer. Um, but uh, I'm, I've kind of switched them around because there was Seamus and Lark, and I had this guy as Seamus, but I think it would make more sense. For him to be Lark, uh, because Lark is su is supposed to be the side of the family that has immigrated to America, and um, and Seamus is the part of the family that has that is still in Ireland. Um, but I, Lark, is supposed to be have some Native American blood in him, so he's got the darker coloration. And so that would, it would just make more sense if, and at the time I just was too close to it, you know, like uh, to, to re, to reassign them. But now, you know, it's been a couple years and it's easier for me to say, okay, <laughs> this guy is going to be Lark. Um, so, uh, and uh, Lark um, was having a little bit of a romance with, Alondria's sister um, who had been lost and was kind of unknown what happened to her and wasn't talking kind of thing um, so that's Lady um, who Pieta is supposed to be Lady and I've been having some thoughts about that too <laughs> so we'll see uh, lots of lots of thoughts in my mind about who is going to be who um, and I'm just kind of not sure about some things. Um, nobody's going anywhere, that's for sure, but they just might end up being a different character than what I had initially thought that they were going to be, which happens. That's what dolls do. As long as they stay, I don't care if they want to switch characters. <laughs> um, yeah, especially when other dolls come in, um, and then you kind of start to, well, this would be a better shell for that. Um, so, and yeah, it's, I'm sure nobody even remembers that anymore anyways. So, cause that, that's the kind of part of it too, is that you're like, you don't want to change things on people. And I don't know, I understand that. Like you have the right to do it. They're your dolls and your characters, but I understand that people, you know, like, oh, well, people are going to think I'm flaky with my characters or something or whatever, these worries that we have. So but yeah, lots of, lots of different ideas. Like I said, I don't know character wise who this handsome guy is, but, um, he's amazing and handsome. <laughs> That's who he is. <laughs> uh, yeah. Isn't, look at his, his ears that, oh, he's so awesome. He's 
so cool. Yeah, this head's not going anywhere. He's staying on this body. <laughs> He's not going anywhere. Um, there's still dolls <laughs> that uh, should be coming in. Dolls that have been paid off. Um, so there is a, uh, a doll she Ray Lewis and I need to contact the seller again and see what the heck is up because it, it's just taking too long. <laughs> um, the head was supposed to be coming to them from the dealer and I mean it's been like it's been like six weeks so I don't like come on. <laughs> um, so I just want that boy already. Um, not that I don't have enough dolls to play with and that sort of thing but um, it's just this little bit of anxiety because this you paid for it, the money's out there, and you don't have the doll. <laughs> um, and it's not like the doll isn't made. It just needs to be mailed to me. <laughs> Come to me. Um, so that doll should be coming very soon, hopefully. Um, and then the other doll that's paid for and I'm just waiting on is my Granado Enoch um, in bronze. And they let me put on the Dark Lord head. Um, and I don't think he's going to be coming with a face up because I, no, I don't think he is. Cause I didn't like the, I didn't care for the face up that they had for him. Um, it wasn't cause he's supposed to be the reshell for, for Gehern. Um, so, and he's taking a lot longer than I ever thought to, but the problem there was that I didn't realize they don't start making the doll until your layaway is started. And so next time, if I do a, a layaway and order through Granado, I'm definitely going to order through a dealer like uh, BJD Divas um, because most of the dealers, a lot of them, pay for it up front. And so a lot of times by the time you're finished with your layaway, your doll's ready. Um, so I bet you, I bet you he'll be here by March. That's, I anticipate. Are there any others that are paid for that are out there? No. Um, I've got some other dolls on layaway that should be coming in through the year. Yay! <laughs> um, I think that that's everything. Um, really loving my new guys. Uh, they're super handsome. Um, I'll try to do a video as I get to know him more and especially after it. I would like to restring him and suede him and then, you know, give you guys a good body review. I, I, I wanted to do body reviews on so many dolls and that was kind of like my plan for 2017 is that I was going to start doing body reviews on all these dolls that I have because a lot of them are dolls that there aren't any body reviews or a lot of information on. So, um, if my, uh, I'm still waiting to get my uh, channel because they I, I think they're going through and checking all these channels by hand now instead of automated and so it's been it's been three weeks for it's got to have been a month now that I submitted to get my channel monetized I meet all the criteria they just a person has to get to it and manually look through it it's not automated anymore um, so when that happens and depending on how things work out money wise uh, th then I might be more motivated to, um, you know, put some actual work into some more polished bo body review videos and make the time to do that if it's, um, you know, because right now I'm just making videos that are updates that are, oh, I want to make this video and I want to talk about this. Body reviews are a little more, um, you know, you have to prepare and kind of set up things a little more, I guess. I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, that, that's another goal to share <laughs> is to do more body reviews for you. Um, okay, I'm gonna wrap this video up. Thanks guys so much for watching. Um, I hope you're having a great Monday. Uh, it was, this was nice. I had three days off in a row and it was just like some sort of like, oh, <sighs> it's so nice. It was so nice to have some time off um, to sew. Uh, to play with my dolls, um, to just kind of hang out. There was no other big pressing thing. Um, 
holidays are stressful. <laughs> there, there was nothing, you know, like I've got to hurry up and prepare for this thing. Um, it was just really nice. Uh, it's the most break that I've had in many months. Um, and it was really nice. So hopefully when I start my new job next month, that there'll be more, um, weeks like this. <laughs> All right, guys, take care. Bye bye Hi guys. Popping in just for a quick, I wanted to show you, uh, it took so long to upload those, uh, uh, that video, uh, that I was able to finish the beading, uh, on this corset and, um, add some bows and I really like it. It kind of finished it off a little bit and I like it a lot better now. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that I meant to do was, uh, I have been, I keep wanting to do this and I don't write it down so I forget, is I want to do, um, I want to do some shout outs to some YouTubers that I have been watching that I don't feel are getting enough attention or that people maybe know uh, about their channel. Um, and I know that I'm always looking for more BJD people to, to watch and follow. So um, I really want to uh, especially do a shout out for C Hedgehog. Um, I am enjoying her content very much. She is a uh, crazy modder. Like she does like, and really well. <laughs> like she talks about these mods that she did or is going to do and you're like, well, that sounds really <laughs> insane. Um, she does all of those mods just really perfectly. Uh, has a really awesome collection uh and um does a lot of sewing too which i have been enjoying uh her videos just talking about sewing uh <clears throat> so her channel uh see hedgehog and i'm gonna put links down here uh to people um another uh relatively new uh bjd youtuber is josh gone um i just found his channel today and he's got um, a very nice collection of Doll Chateau and Doll Zone um, hybrids of various kinds. Uh, really nice dolls. And he's pretty new. Could use some new subscribers. And, <clears throat> and then some uh, other people that I have been watching um, that aren't necessarily new. Um, let's see here. Uh, strung out BJD. I think she's been around a while and just started making, uh, but maybe was inactive for a bit. And she's been making some really great um, body reviews. Or she's done a review on Zal Muse, and she just did one on Soul Soul Doll Vito Edmund, um, and really excellent in-depth reviews uh, with a lot of insight into the doll and potential modifications to deal with issues, which really awesome. Um, so I really, uh, really have been enjoying her content. And um, I know this person has been around a while. I don't think she's a new YouTuber by any means. And I'm sorry, I do not know how to say her name. It's, it's D-E-R-3-E-N-8. G-R-A. I don't know if that's Drizzen 8 Gray or something like that. I, I don't know how to say it, but I uh, she's been really active the last few months um, and produces a lot of content that I enjoy and appreciate. <laughs> so, sorry if I was facing this way, I was reading names and stuff. Um, but, okay. <laughs> These are my shout outs that I've been meaning to make. Every video I'm like, oh, I forgot to do that. So, alright. Bye for reals. See ya.